Here we can see the inside of the bladder and you can see the buildup of muscles which is caused in this case by an obstruction of the bladder neck. Now looking at the right ureteric orifice where the urine comes down from the kidneys and there's the left ureteric orifice. So the bladder neck in the middle and the lobes of the prostate on the right and the left. In the centre we can now see the varium montanum. We're moving back now toward the urinary sphincter which is of course the continence mechanism. The procedure itself is performed using a metal loop which is connected to one side of a diathermy machine. This uses electric cautery to cut through the prostate a slice at a time. And we move round the clock taking one chip at a time until there's a nice cavity which allows the urine to pass freely. There's the metal loop. Just taking the first chip now. The whole procedure is performed under water and uh, the irrigant, irrigant itself is designed not to conduct electricity otherwise the current wouldn't flow into the tissues and it's also isotopic. Most people these days use a continuous irrigation system which means that water is continuously entering the bladder and also being removed via a separate port on the instrument. And here you can see the loop gently passing around the 3 o'clock point towards 2 now and producing a cavity within the prostate. You can see from time to time small vessels are opened up and these usually cauterized using a different setting and then at the end of the procedure a small ball is used again to cauterize all of the open vessels to try and produce hemostasis, stop the bleeding entirely. In a second we'll move back and see the cavity which remains. If you remember at the start of the procedure the prostate pushing in from both sides with a median lobe in the middle and now you can see there's a very nice way through for the urine to pass. And that's the end of the procedure.